you can summarize what we do in one word, and that's education. That's educate kids primarily. Uh, it started out uh, years ago as just a rehab center, and they found out that some of the rehab birds could be very effective in bringing this educational conservation mission to the people, and now we actually have two sides of it. There's the education unit as well as the rehab unit. We specialize in using the birds to teach whatever curriculum topic that a teacher or another client may desire. We can use the birds to teach about mathematics. We can use the birds to teach about literature, history, in addition to science and natural history topics. And so we spend some time really looking into what our birds can offer other than just bird facts. You probably remember the thing in your life that sparked your interest in a subject, a book, or seeing something. Well, sometimes if we can just spark the interest in these kids in flight, they become pilots, or in birds, they become naturalists, or in the mathematics involved in figuring the area of a wing, and they end up becoming mathematicians. That's what we do, we try to get them interested in something. In addition to the educational programs, another facet of the center involves saving wildlife as students and volunteers assist the full-service veterinary hospital and rehabilitation center. Basically what we do is we take in patients from all over the southeast and we focus mainly on birds of prey but we also do work on non-birds of prey too. So we'll take in cardinals or any type of birds but what we do is uh, triage them with a group of senior veterinary students or even undergraduate veterinary students and our volunteers and then we do uh, diagnostics and do our best to come up with a treatment plan and rehabilitate them and eventually release them. Here, look, you can see, see how when you look into the opening of the people there's cloudiness and do you also notice how the iris is misshapen? You can really tell by looking at the people, like, to see how it's not there. I also like to educate the public, too, to let them know what goes on at places like this and how important wildlife is, how important these birds of prey are as, long as, as far as how they are biological indicators. They let us know how our ecosystems are doing. In a tradition that started in the year 2000, the most visible display of the Raptor Center's work gets showcased at every home game at Jordan-Hare Stadium right before kickoff. Here at Auburn, we are the Auburn Tigers, so our mascot is the Tigers. However, our battle cry is War Eagle. And since 1892, we've had a total of seven golden eagles that have represented our battle cry. I tell people all the time, if you can train a dog to come sit and stay, you could train an eagle. You just have to be a little more careful about it, a little more cautious. They're very intelligent. They respond to the conditioning. It's classical operant conditioning. It's that consistency that makes it work. Uh, if you do that over and over, then the bird will fly in front of 87,000 screaming fans. Raptors are top-of-the-line predators. They're really only interested in one thing, and that is a food reward. They're not interested in our affection, our quality time, or our care for them. Instead, what they want as predators is to eat. And so what we do is we teach the birds that when they come to us, they get what they want, which is their food. And over time, we desensitize the birds, we introduce more and more distraction, more and more distance. Of course, it does take a lot of time, training. We spend a lot of time getting the birds used to crowds, loud noises, and before long, the bird is soaring in front of thousands of people. 